How's it going, my dudes? This video is brought to you by Squarespace today. Here at Trek Culture, there's nothing we love more than trying to take on those big philosophical questions that have befuddled Star Trek fans since it hit the airs almost 60 years ago. And in fact, if we count the cage, which of course we do, we are now in the 60th year of Star Trek. So there are some things that have just been so confusing and so outside of our normal sphere of thinking that it's very hard to really pin it down. But that's why we're here, folks. That's why we're gonna do this for you. That's why I'm Sean Ferrick for Trek Culture, and here are 11-ish times Voyager lost a shuttle. Number 14, typecasting. Yes, I know what the title is, but let's hop on. If you thought this was just gonna be a numbers game, like musical chairs or something like that, then think again, because we have to take in types, models, and different shuttle builds. As detailed in Star Trek Voyager, A Vision of the Future, the producers had hoped to design and build a new type of shuttle before the show actually aired. In, however, the grand scale of, you know, television in general, there was no money left. So they decided to adapt a Type 6 shuttle left over from Star Trek The Next Generation. When it came to naming this shuttle, there was a few different names considered. There was Einstein, Amelia Earhart, Marie Curie, and Mae Jameson. In the end, they went with the name of the first woman in space, Valentina Tereshkova. Voyager did have at least one Type 6 shuttle that was first seen in Innocence. It was also then shown in episodes like Macrocosm, and in dialogue in Coda, it was named as the Sacagawea. Macrocosm and Coda, however, confuse things because the exterior shots are clearly a Type 6 shuttle, but the interior view of the Master Systems display show a Type 6. 8 shuttle, and there's several examples of this incontinuity throughout the show. Actually, this new shuttle craft that was designed by Rick Sternbach caused problems again, because in Season 2 it was designed and described as the Type 12, but then it was later named the Type 9. Let's also not forget the infamous Aero Shuttle, which is effectively the captain's yacht of Voyager, which of course was technically never seen on screen, and yet every time you see underneath the saucer section of Voyager, you see it. So, I mean, it is there, uh, and for the purposes of this list, sorry Neelix, but the back seal can just stay in the shuttle bay. Number 13, Type 8, the Tereshkova Initiations. Voyager showed some restraint, and it actually waited until the second episode of the second season to blow up one of its shuttles. I mean, after all, weapons fire from a Kazon Raider will do that to you. In the beginning of the episode Initiations, Chakotay, in his Type 8, makes quick work of a Kazon fighter, but it's no match for a Kazon Predator type that shows up later in the episode. So we finally see this episode blowing up in a blaze of glory going down into a planet. Now, the shots of the shuttle are unmistakably the Type 8 filming model that was used, but the actual markings on the hull are, at this time anyway, a basically unintelligible blur. However, it can be inferred from the information we already have available to us that this was, in fact, the Tereshkova. That said, the same filming model was used in several later episodes, including the episode Maneuvers, for example. So, technically, this one died, came back from the dead, and then died again several times. Number 12, Type 8, the Drake, non sequitur. The Drake arguably finds itself in the lost shuttles, as opposed to destroyed shuttles, because it's technically MIA, and it's assumed that it was destroyed. While this shuttle, piloted by Harry Kim, was directly referred to as the Drake, we technically only saw the Type 8 filming model, and then there's like a nodding reference as it does a flyby in San Francisco. The overall lack of distinct exterior shots of the Drake suggests that it is a different shuttle, and therefore it helps to avoid locking it into being the Tereshkova as well, in terms of filming models. So we can infer it's a separate shuttle. Tom Paris does say, hull breach in progress, which does suggest that the Drake was not long for this world, or certainly that retrieving it might have been more hassle than it was worth. Earth. So it is very much assumed that it was lost in those time streams. And just because we didn't see the explosions doesn't mean the explosions didn't happen. Number 11, Class 2, Type 9, Name Unknown, Unity. When out along the Necrot Expanse in their Class 2 shuttle, Chakotay and Ensign Kaplan pick up a standard Starfleet communication signal. They get closer to investigate, and what they find is Borg. 
and also the loss of a shuttle and the loss of Vincent Kaplan. This is the first Class II shuttle that's destroyed in Voyager. Now, we don't see it being destroyed on screen, but Riley informs Chakotay a little bit later on that his shuttle isn't there anymore when he suggests going back. And by the time Voyager arrives on the planet, Tuvok does confirm that the shuttle is nowhere to be found. Later in the episode, Chakotay and Torres are going back to Voyager on yet another Class II shuttle. Now, thankfully, Voyager does remember to tow this one in before a reactivated Borg cube explodes. Number 10. Class 2, Type 9, name unknown, The Gift. As a going away present in The Gift, Kess is given a Class 2 Voyager Type 9 shuttle as a parting gift. She, in turn, gives them 10,000 light years closer to home. I'd say that's a pretty fair exchange in my book. However, when Kess returns in the later episode Fury, the Class 2 shuttle is nowhere to be found. And in fact, the ship she arrives on, the exterior shot, was reused from those thieving ships from Concerning Flight, whereas the interior was originally used for Captain Braxton's timeship Eon in Future's End. If we're speaking directly in terms of dates, Fury actually shows the first chronological appearance of a Class II shuttle in Voyager because of Kess time hopping back into the past. The episode in which she arrives in is in fact before the episode Threshold, which was the first on-screen depiction of this Class II shuttle. Okay, my head's sore enough without time travel, thank you very much. Number 9, Class II Type 9, The Cochrane Day of Honour. Ah, if only these Titanium Alloy Hulls could talk. Voyager Shuttle Number 4, the Cochrane, would have stories to tell. It had a weird run on Voyager. Now, I don't want to get all down and dirty in the conspiracy theory here, but maybe that's why it was destroyed. I bet Tom Paris and Captain Janeway weren't sorry to see it go. Whatever else you want to say about the salamander-inducing shuttle from Threshold, the Cochrane was the first Starfleet ship to break the Warp 10 barrier as we understood it at the time. Now, despite its illustrious debut, the Cochrane wasn't spared a dishonorable discharge. In Day of Honor, it was simply blown up thanks to a pulse charge from the Katati. The Cochrane was the only Class II shuttle on Voyager to receive a name, although we do know that Jupiter Station had the Dawkins. We might have seen two Class IIs in Fury, but by now Voyager had lost three of them and would lose at least two more after Day of Honor. Your head hurting yet? Mine is. And I have a script. Number eight, class type unknown, name unknown, Nemesis. Aside from a tiny scrap of debris found by Chakotay, the shuttle in Nemesis is never given a name and we never really discover the type of shuttle it is. We can say with confidence, however, that this particular vehicle was well and truly nullified. We've all been there, right? Sometimes trace Omicron emissions are just too tempting to ignore. And then we get brightly greeted, i.e. being shot down by the Vorai. In the episode Nemesis, Chakotay is the victim of brainwashing, so frankly, very little he says or does can be really trusted. It's in Captain Janeway's log that we finally get the definitive fate of the shuttle, wherein she says, After searching for more than two days, we finally located what's left of Commander Chakotay's shuttle. I can only hope the commander has fared better than his vessel. This shuttle's gone. Fathom? Number seven. Two Class II Type 9s, names unknown, Counterpoint. Properly speaking, this entry doesn't count as a loss, a more of a charitable gift. And actually, thanks to a very heartwarming scene in Star Trek Prodigy, we know that this gift paid off for the Brunari. That said, Voyager's still down another two shuttles. Captain Jeremy and crew's defiance of the anti-telepathic Devor Imperium in Counterpoint was a masterclass in standing up to bullies with bigger starships. Thanks to Voyager, the Bernari make it to their wormhole and get out of Devor space in which they faced persecution. Nine years after this, at least one of the Bernari refugees had made it all the way to the Alpha Quadrant and into Starfleet and is able to help Admiral Janeway aboard the USS Dauntless. You never know, those two lost shuttles might now be sitting in their very own fleet museum. Number six, type six, name unknown, gravity. Grumpy teenage Tuvok and a Mabity well? Yes. But which one made the shuttle crash? As Tom Paris noted, they probably should have brought the Delta Flyer because once they landed down on this planet where time moved relatively fast, that Type 6 wasn't going anywhere. 
Now, it's extremely unlikely that Voyager had time to rescue any part of this shuttle before the singularity they were beaming through closed in on itself. In fact, Tom Paris, Tuvok, the Doctor, and their new friend Nos had to be within a two meter radius of the transport relay just to be sure of a beam out. A shame they couldn't have grabbed any of those spiders for Neelix to saute. Number five, class two type nine, name unknown, Federation Starfleet, Dark Frontier. Voyager had so many shuttles, or at least the ability to build so many of them, that they were able to use one of them as bait for the Borg. I mean, that said, I mean, remotely piloting a shuttle with false biosigns on board, tricking the Borg into lowering their shields to beam it aboard is quite the clever ruse. Even if the Queen was spying on Operation Fort Knox the whole time. Interestingly enough, we only ever see this shuttle from the Borg's perspective in this episode, and it's only ever identified as Federation Starfleet Class II shuttlecraft. It's not given a name on screen. We can only assume that it was rightly assimilated. The parcel assimilation and crash of another ship, namely the Raven, the Hansen's old starship, had already actually caused the loss of another shuttlecraft earlier uh, in the show. Maybe let's keep an eye out for that one as this list goes on. Number four. Class 2, Type 9, Name Unknown, Natural Law. A, a quick memo, the next time, let's listen to Seven of Nine when she says, a sensor analysis would have provided the necessary information. Not for the first time, Curiosity nearly killed the Chakotay, and this time Seven was dragged along for the view. The episode Natural Law appears toward the end of Voyager's run, and it opens very unequivocally, destroying a shuttle. As far as we know, this is the last shuttle that Voyager lost on its way back to the Alpha Quadrant. To be fair, it's given a CGI farewell befitting that honour. At first playing hopscotch across an energy barrier, the feedback then proves to be too much and the shuttle explodes. Now thankfully Seven and Chakotay managed to beam out in time, whereas we the audience are treated to the shuttle's deflector away blasting past the camera. All of the shuttle pieces are recovered and Tom Paris is responsible for the destruction of said deflector away, which is great for not interfering with other races, but terrible for him, he's never going to be able to pilot a ship in Ladozian space now. Number three. The definitely maybes. To accompany the, oh, that definitely exploded set of shuttles in Voyager, we now have to look at the ones that are almost definitely exploded. We're saying it that way because we're not 100% sure, but we're in the high 90s. In Parturition, the shuttle that Tom and Neelix took down to the planet was pretty banged up and probably was left there, but for argument's sake, it could have been salvaged. In Rise, Neelix again, with Tuvok and a guest, we had the warp and impulse engines of the shuttle are destroyed, but I suppose we can't say for complete certainty that the shuttle itself was destroyed. In The Raven, Seven's homing signal gets activated by what's left of the USS Raven. She then exits the shuttle bay, creatively, in a Type 6 shuttle, which, depending on the flyby shot, then becomes a Type 8, back to a Type 6, back to a Type 8, back to a Type 6 again. It's entirely possible that this shuttle was left behind in Bomar space because it's only Tom Paris's Type 9 Class 2 that's identified as returning to Voyager at the end of the episode. In the episode Hunters, quite frankly, we don't know what happened to Seven and Tuvok's shuttle. In the episode Drone, a claustrophobic Class 2 shuttle is caught in a gravimetric shear and never spoken of again. Poor old Ensign Mulcahy. In Think Tank, a shuttle is perhaps left with the a eponymous ne'er-do-wells as Voyager warps away. In Sunkatsi, another Class II shuttle goes by the wayside when Seven and Tuvok are captured by a Jeffrey Combs look-alike. We never know what happens to the shuttle, but for all we know, it entered the deathmatch as well. Zoomcats, Zoomcats, Zoomcats. Number two, the Delta Flyer. Presumably not wanting to feel left out, Tom Paris's hot rod took an absolute pasting throughout its run on the show. The Delta Flyer then met its ultimate end on the wrong end of some Borg torpedoes in Unimatrix Zero Part 1. Thankfully, they soon built a new one quicker than you can say just married, with some lovely tin cans attached to the back of it. Of course, notorious outlaw Harry Kim, who had finally just snapped from not getting a promotion and inadvertently being responsible for the death of almost his entire crew, was aboard the Delta Flyer 15 years into a possible future in the episode Timeless. That ship was destroyed by the efforts to change the timeline. And actually, on that topic, if Voyager was there buried under several hundred meters of ice, so presumably were all of its shuttles. So frankly, you could say that's the complete set in one episode alone. This brings us to our final, probably most hypothetical entry. Number one, all of them and Voyager 2. 
We may never know how many shuttles Voyager actually started with, and you know, it's debatable how many of them were destroyed or lost along the way. Oddly enough, what is the easiest to quantify is the number of times Voyager itself was completely destroyed, which one assumes would include all of the secondary craft as well. Eh, not for long though, you know, they still had a show to make. Temporarily, Voyager doubled its entire complement in the episode Deadlock before one of them and all of its support craft was self-destruct by Janeway. Let's not forget the ship that was made entirely out of silver blood until, of course, they met their oblivion. Paraphrasing the alternate future Harry Kim, when Voyager hit the ice at full speed, decks 9 through 14 compressed to become deck 10. The main shuttle bay of an Intrepid class ship is on deck 10, so... That's a lot of squished shuttles. Later in that same season, in the episode Relativity, the Chrono dis Disruptor, Chrono, dip Chrono Bomb, set by Captain Braxton, destroyed the ship as well. Another set of shuttles going boom. Year of Hell was probably a bad year for shuttles, and the alternate future Admiral Janeway probably saw the loss of a few more shuttles on her version of the rest of Voyager's journey home. If we go back to the future's end, for a second. Captain Braxton says that Voyager's hull was found in an explosion in the 29th century. In that timeline, it's fairly certain that Voyager, and presumably all of its shuttles as well, went boom. So say it with me now. And down will come baby shuttles and all. You're very welcome. Dudes, it's your favorite Rysian meteorologist, Chad Torka, here to tell you about the awesomeness of Squarespace. They've got the next generation of technology with their fluid engine. You know me, my friends. I'm Salt the Riser. I don't get that techno babble. So when I talk about fluid engine and how awesome Squarespace is to use, even I can use it. If I can, you can. They can even help you make custom merch. Sign Chad Tarker neck brace is coming soon. And you can sell it via the online store that ya, yeah, they offer. And when you're ready to rip some waves like me, go to squarespace.com forward slash trackculture for a free trial and for 10% off your first website or domain purchase. You're awesome, my dudes. Do the awesome thing. Chad Tarker out. Folks, thank you so much for following this along. I love lists like this. Thank you so much to Jack Kylie for taking the time to go through Voyager and quantify how many. We hope this answered your question. And if it didn't, don't worry. I'm as confused as anyone. So make sure you check out the article that's on whatculture.com as well. Makes it a little bit easier. Uh, you're also wonderful and awesome. Thank you so much. Please make sure you're following us on the various socials. Just type in at Trek Culture, you'll find us. And also, we are so close to 300,000 subscribers with just a little extra push, if you don't mind. That will really help us get up and over and we can bring you more and more content. So remember folks, please click subscribe over on the YouTube channel. It makes such a difference. Really now, it does. I have been Sean Ferrick. You can follow me at Sean Ferrick on the various socials. Until I see you again, look after yourself. Make sure that you live long and prosper. And folks, now more than ever, lead with kindness and love. It is a dark time in human history, but humans have the power to change that. So please, Make sure that you put out love into the world, and that's all we can really ask for. Thank you so much. I will see you soon.